hi everyone, Chaplain Craig Nakagawa here, and today I want to talk to you about how to stay calm in a crisis of biblical proportions. Won't you please join me? We have all faced a crisis at one point in our life or another, and often we may have felt it was of, well, biblical proportions. Perhaps the current crisis we are facing as a nation and as a world is such a time for you. When it first started out and the governor ordered us to minimize movement and to stay at home as much as possible, many people thought of it as a little vacation, albeit a staycation. But as the cases of COVID-19 has hit a million worldwide and reached over a quarter of a million in the United States, the rally has turned out to be something else altogether. And when you couple this with the extended stay that you've had at home and your minimized movements, well, and you throw in some kids and a cat, a dog, your spouse, all the stress and being cooped up may have left you feeling more than a little blue. And you just don't know what to do. As a matter of fact, the more you sit and think about it, the more you begin to wonder what is going to happen. What direction are we heading in? Can we trust the news? How long will it last? Are you concerned about food supplies, communicating with others, recreation, our family, our jobs? You might just begin to wonder if God is in control and does God have a plan? And the answer is yes. God is in control and God does have a plan. But to understand what is happening in our future, we need to look to our biblical past to see that God has always had a plan. And then even when we have made less than ideal choices, well, God had a contingency for that. God's love was unfailing and God continues to have a plan for us. In Jeremiah 29, 11, God tells us, for I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord, plans of peace, not evil, to give you an expected end. And in Matthew 6, 25, Jesus tells us, take no thought of your life, what you will eat, what you will drink. Behold the birds of the air. They do not sow, they do not reap, or gather supplies into a barn. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not better than they? And then Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, writes in chapter 4, verse 6, be concerned for no thing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your needs known to God. And then later in his letter to Romans, Paul writes in chapter 8, verse 28, And we know for those who love God, all things work together for the good. And then the Proverbs tell us in chapter 23, verse 18, Surely there is a future for you, and your hope will not be cut off. So if we look at what it says in Romans chapter 8, for we know those who love God, all things work together for the good. It tells us there that not all things are good, for there is evil in the world and there are things that harm us. But it tells us that for those who love God, all things work together for the good. So even though you may not know what direction this may go in or exactly how it may end, you can know that God has a plan for you and your family, that God is in control that you can trust God and God's plan for you. Well, this has been Chaplain Nakagawa. Thank you so much for joining me. And as always, I want to let you know that if you need prayer or want to speak to someone, you can call the chapel. And if it is after duty hours, you can call the command post and ask for the duty chaplain. Well, God bless you. And until next time, may he keep you safe.